Thanks for tuning in again, everybody. We're back with your favorite podcast, Lucas, Tigers, and Bronze. Oh, my. I got to give you a shout out because we're recording this at a super interesting time. I don't know if you follow the NBA uh, market. So we just had a blockbuster uh, deal. Not, blockbuster. not as closely as, uh, as the rest of the guys at Cherry, but definitely. So oh, listen, let's start it off right there. Tell us about Cherry. Well, Cherry is um, Cherry is uh, Grayson's idea. Grayson is the guy you'd see um, in a lot of the videos on Instagram, especially. Um, he started back in 2008 uh, off the side of his desk while he was um, doing uh, doing other work around around Melbourne. He um, He's always loved cards. We grew up together, myself and him, um, out in countryside um, Tasmania. And he had wanted to have a card store even since back then, I can remember. Um, so he started off selling, you know, just buying uh, boxes from the States, shipping them over and um, selling them, selling them to a small group of friends, group of collectors in, uh, in Melbourne. And um, in 2015, he kept running it all the way through, uh, through, through to 2015. In 2015, he went full-time with it. He sort of quit the, quit the, the full-time job and thought, um, let's try cards out full-time with a store. Um, he asked me to come on and help him with uh, some of the social media and marketing at that time as well. So I've been doing that, whether it's full-time or part-time, with him um, since 2015, and um, I told him, "Don't bother with the store." At the time, I was like, "What do you want a store for? Just run it out of your house and have a um, have a storage space somewhere, or use your garage, or you know, forget all those overheads." But he didn't listen, and um, mm. he because he's always wanted a store, so he just uh, he went for it with the first store. And uh, no, it probably, it would have been hard work, I think, in that store for that initial three or four years uh, when, um, you know, from sort of 2015 through to 2019, there wasn't um, certainly the amount of interest that there is now in cards. But um, I reckon the last, the last 18 months, last two years would be a, um, he, he's, we're all very pleased with, um, with how how much interest has been pouring into the hobby, and um, it's totally totally vindicated his big move back in 2015 to have a sports card store that not very many people went to, and uh, and now he has a has a store that um, you know we've got people beating down the door to get in. Luca Nation, our guest today is the one and only Charlie, and I know he I know you guys have to know his account. Uh, his team. It's the Cherry Collectibles Australia Card Shop. Uh, and I'm confident, I mean, most, if not all of our audience knows Cherry. Um, oh, yeah. Some of the best content on the internet because their social media, their Instagram isn't just like, hey, buy my stuff. It's oh. funny. It's entertaining. It's <laughs> memes. It's banter. Uh, and these are our friends from down under now, right? It's nice to have yeah, friends from around the world. You know, we have the, a lot of we have a lot of listeners from Australia, and I, I get into it with them every now and again about Australia. And then, you know what they tell me? They tell me, "Listen, if you ever come to Australia, there's a couple of things you got to know. Okay, if you ever walk around saying that's not a knife, that's a knife, someone's gonna punch you in the nose. Okay, that's one. <laughs> number two, don't order a Foster's. Okay, that's considered kangaroo yeah. piss. And number three, the tourist destination is Cherry." You gotta stop at the cherry shop. That's the so that's the this is what this is what I know about Australia. That and you know, if you put a shrimp on a barbie, don't say it like an idiot. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's, but yeah, man, we we're excited to have you on. I mean, I love you know, guys. If you haven't checked the page out, check it out because it's a combination of the cards. It's a combination of the cards that that are huge there, so you get a little bit of soccer influence as well. But the memes are hilarious. You know, you get the whole you know the, the industry standard of uh, you know you pull a Luca and you're all happy, but then you realize it's a Luca, the wrong Luca, and you're not so happy. Yeah. You know, what I mean, like just I mean, it, it's it's a good follow if you happen to be one of the three people who collect cards and aren't following them. Get on there and, and give them a follow, and we're really excited to have you on, man. Oh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for that um, endorsement. And um, 
look, if that's if that's the impression that people get, then I'm doing the right thing. Uh, that's um, that's what it's all about. Is that sort of it's it's fun. It's um, it's talking about the cards. It's it's very little of um, hopefully come and buy, come and buy because um, it doesn't. I don't feel it works. It's sort of that. Um, if you want to have a, if there's an inspiration for that, it would be Gary V. Um, uh, I don't know. You guys had him. I think you guys had him on recently. He came and visited us in 2019. What I is going to ask now? Because that's how I found you guys. You were. Oh, in really? Blog. Yeah, I remember I started following you about two, two and a half years ago when uh, him and his team visited your card store and they did a vlog with you guys. So I'd love yeah. to hear how was that experience? That was the early days of the hobby, so to speak, right? Well, well, it was early, it was certainly early in terms of the current boom in popularity. Yeah, that was was, um, was early years for Gary, <laughs> but it sounds like Charlie yeah. and his partner were doing this for you know a long time. So, but it's nice to get Gary to come in. That's a little vindication, right, of the uh, the brick and mortar, and you know, quitting the full time gig and doing this full time instead. But yeah, tell us how yeah. that came about, and you know, that's a fun story. Well, yeah, it is a fun story. That came about because Gray, 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 um, that's my my um, my nickname for Grayson. Gray goes over to the national. He has been going over since maybe twenty fourteen or thirteen, I think, and um, so he goes over every year. And um, you know, in that lead up to twenty nineteen national, he was. Um, he was all about Gary, you know, oh, Gary's talking about cards, probably going to get some extra eyeballs on the hobby, I guess. So let's see what, let's see what happens with website traffic, that sort of thing. And then he's on the way over to the national. And, um, and I said to him, oh, you got to make sure you go to Gary's um, panel because he's got a panel at the national this year. And Gray had no idea. He was like, what is he really? Oh, I'll have to go. So he goes and um, he meets Gary very briefly. I think he gave him, I think he gave him a card, like some footy cards or something, AFL cards, which were a bit different. And then, um, and then he he meets him later on at the booth, and they sort of had a chat about, um, you know, how the hobbies um, hobbies moving on. And then I back here, I discovered that Gary was actually getting on a plane from. Um, from Chicago to come to Australia for a um, for a speaking tour here in Australia, and um, so I thought, man, imagine if um, imagine if we could get him to come into the store, that'd be huge. And Gray's just had this 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 little meeting with him. I wonder if we could organise something. So I sort of I sort of um, annoyed Gary's assistant a little bit on Instagram, just sort of professional annoyance, not sort of spamming them. And um, the we old set Facebook, up a little the old Facebook poke button, right? <laughs> I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy you said this because I mean, right off the bat, I'm happy you said you were spamming them because I thought that, that in Down Under you said you Vegemite them. You don't spam them. I thought it was a different <laughs> thing. I thought you know, no, that's I had that wrong. But no, spamming. I think I think spamming's a global term. <laughs> yeah, um, my my son's looking at me saying bad dad joke. <laughs> bad Australian <laughs> dad joke. <laughs> I don't mind the dad joke. I, we can all do them now because we've got kids, so it's all right. Um, so I sort of, I sort of annoyed his um, assistant Tyler a little bit. I sent him a few DMs and um, tried to figure out where where they were going to be. And um, eventually, we got a message back on a on a Monday morning from from Gary's account on Insta. It said we're on the way, and um, we all freaked out in the store and um, we had actually tidied the store up because it was looking pretty disgraceful before um, <laughs> that morning, but we gave it an extra, an extra tidy because we thought, wow, if he goes live in here and this place is looking a mess, nobody's going to want to come in. Um, and yeah, he came in with, uh, with his, with the rest of his, the rest of his team. He had a videographer with him, you know, the whole, the whole, um, the whole treatment. And he was busting cards in there for, couple of hours eventually like I was looking at my watch like Gary's a busy guy I'm sure he has probably got every you know 15 minutes of this day accounted for and he's been here a while like is he um has he have you not got somewhere to be Gary um, 
<laughs> this, that, so yeah. the story takes a turn, and, and Charlie had to kick Gary out of his store. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no loitering. Do you Only see the no loitering sign? <laughs> no loitering, Gary. <laughs> I think he went from there down to the exhibition center, and he had he basically walked straight on stage for a for a talk, yeah. But that was yeah, that was a fantastic day, and it was great to meet him. And um, yeah, my our impression was super genuine guy, great team of guys, and um, you know the um, the the format of of content uh, that he talks about is is something that we've put into practice and. It's it's paying off so far, so it's fantastic. I'm curious, you know, we, we've seen the emergence of the hobby in the last year. We mm. talked about the boom, but from an LCS, you know, from a local store perspective, what have you seen? How is, where has your growth been? Has it been online breaks? Has it been digital media? Or do you have more visitors? I'm curious, you know, from a store perspective, how have you grown? Hmm. Breaks is certainly breaks would be the number one. Um, that's where the that's where most of the growth has occurred. Yeah, it's been in people joining the breaks, whether because they've got a friend who's been doing it for a while, and they see it, and you know they hear about cards becoming more popular, becoming more valuable, so they want to try it out, and that's great. So we see uh, for a long time we've been seeing new people in the YouTube chat or new people joining us on the Facebook page, that sort of thing. So breaks would be the number one, certainly. Um, we've even had to put on an extra session of breaks. Uh, we did that early 2020. So we had now have an evening evening show and a, and a lunchtime show. So that's usually ends up being three or four hours of breaks a day. Um, but it's certainly been, you know, a, a growth in in singles purchases on the website because we um, we break down a lot of product for, for singles when we can, when we get enough volume of it. And um, and as well as the the traffic in store. Unfortunately, with, um, with the impact of that the virus had in Melbourne last year where the store is, we were closed most of the year. So it was sort of like the, the time where having a store would be the best thing to have. Nobody could come and visit. Um, but but, the but, you're, but you see in the global like online business, obviously is blooming anyway. So it's probably all right. And allowed you, I guess, to kind of expand that, yeah. the breaking and everything online. I got a question that's an offshoot on that, right? So it's um, mm. obviously it's a global business and you're breaking, can, you know, a lot done online comes from anywhere. Tell me about the local appetite. Tell me about the people who did come into the store or the people who buy from Australia. What, what's the most popular thing with the, the collectors there? Is it basketball also? Is it is it football? Is it, I mean, are there cricket cards? I, I don't know. That's why I ask you. <laughs> yeah, the basketball is number one. NBA right. cards is number one. And it all, it's all, it's something that, um, it's something that Gary V's talked about. It's that rollback of nostalgia coming mm -hmm. from people who, people, people my age, our age, who perhaps collected in the 90s and now are, you know, I've got more disposable income. Have got some kids, perhaps that they are getting into the that they're getting into the hobby, and um, now they're coming back to sports cards because of, you know, they, now they can watch all the games really easily. It's not like in 1993 here in Australia you got NBA game of the week, right? And that was a that was a one hour package of like one game played on TV at 5 a.m. on one channel. And that, that you, if you missed that for the week, that was it for your NBA <laughs> content. There was no internet. It was like one hour of uh, a condensed NBA game. And sometimes it wouldn't be on. Inexplicably, you'd, you'd get up at 5 a.m. and where's the NBA game of the week? Oh, it's like, you know, the gospel hour or something. Where's the NBA gone? No, it's done for this week. So, um, it's gone it's going it, Kyrie on them, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah. How's the Lamelo right. market? How, how's the Lamelo market? Well, how's Lamelo it? is definitely someone that people are chasing down here in Australia, certainly because he uh, he played those games down here last year. Uh, everybody was really excited to see him. He was great, exciting player. I think he ended up with um, three or four triple doubles in a row for his last three or four games. So 
he is somebody who's just got he's got built in interest from Australian market automatically because um, because of that people loved watching him and um, they'll be chasing his cards once hoops once hoops drops yeah so NBA number one um, after that it's probably probably football cards Aussie rules cards which are really nice and uh, the guys who take care of the company that takes care of them have taken a lot of cues I think from um, from tops and panini in the last couple of years previously it's been a big change for those collectors uh, it's been a real um, it's been a very static static product it's just a it's a product similar level to hoops where the objective for AFL collectors is always, I want to collect the whole set, right? They want every card of every team. And there's not a lot of inserts. There's not a lot of variants. It's just a collectible set. You collect the set, you put it on the shelf, and it's like, that's done. That's 2020 done. What they're experiencing now is all of these new brands coming out. So they're getting a mid-tier a mid brand. They're getting a high-end brand. And that's new for them, you know, like a $500 box. They're like, whoa, 500 bucks. Who's going to pay that? They're used to a $150 box of, uh, of footy cards. So that's a big change uh, for AFL collectors. And then after that, it's sort of NFL, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, all of those um, TCGs. So, but NBA, definitely number one down here. Who are the AFL players that people, you know, who is the LeBron, Kevin Durant, Curry of the AFL? Uh, that is, well, LeBron would be Dustin Martin. He is a, uh, he's a player on the Richmond Tigers. He's, um, that's who everybody, if you can pull one of his cards, if you pull a big insert or, um, you know, a, a signature, that's who everybody is uh, who's after um, in the AFL. I don't follow it closely enough to sort of step down to, I know there's, there's the big so teams. So who's like the are, Jordan? Is it like Tony Lockett? Uh, who would be from that era? Yeah, yeah, Tony Lockett is pretty, pretty legendary. You'd have people like Gary Ablett, um, Gary Ablett Sr. because he's, his son is uh, still playing, or might, he might have just retired. Gary Ablett Sr., you've got Tony Modra, um, and I'm sure that, you know, AFL people who are listening to this are probably screaming at me uh, all the other names. <laughs> <laughs> but those guys are, um, they're, they're from the sort of, that, the, that Jordan type of era. But today it's, it's Dustin Martin, who, um, who everybody wants to pull. Guys, uh, as, as Charlie speaking here, I'm browsing the Cherry Collectibles website. First off, just one of the best, nicest designed, quickest, fastest websites I've been on. So kudos to whoever built the, the website. It's so easy to navigate. Uh, they have a ton of functionality and ton of resources there. So guys, whether you're from Australia or you're from the US and just want to browse around, cherrycollectibles.com, highly recommend it. But I have a favorite player already from the AFL. Yeah. Brody Grundy. Ah, uh, yes. Yep. Brody Grundy. This is my new PC item. Just, well, what are you <laughs> shaking your head for, Cage? <laughs> the Select Dominance Influential card. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a nice card. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he would be one of the, he'd be one of the top, one of the top teams, uh, one of the top players at the moment as well, it, you know, as well as, as well as Dustin. Um, he plays for Collingwood. So he's, um, he's already got, Collingwood's one of the most loved and also most hated teams. So uh, he's, he's on, he's one of, one of the biggest teams and um, yeah, very good player, very popular. And yeah, any cards of his, the, um, that influential card, that select put out beautiful card. Love it. And, and just to shift gears, Cage, bring you back into the fold. Cause no, I love it, man. I love nothing more than you going on walkabout to buy cards of guys from Collington <laughs> named Grundle. Go for it. Have fun. Let's, let's talk Enjoy about yourself. Marvel cards because <laughs> Charlie, let's talk about Marvel cards. Cause you have some really beautiful cards on your website and Cage has mentioned them a few times, uh, but we haven't actually dug into, you know, 
we, we've seen the run up in Pokemon cards, but mm-hmm. Marvel, Yu-Gi-Oh, it, it's getting a little bit of attention, but not quite enough. And, you know, I wanted to open it up. You know, first, it's interesting that you guys even have such a collection of Marvel cards available for sale. Mm. Where's that demand? What are you seeing with the Marvel card industry? That is still, it's still in the background. Um, currently, it's been, it's, it's been, you know, you, you're able to sell a case here and there or a box here and there, you know, whether it's um, the, the, the cards that Upper Deck put out for Avengers or, um, or like the current ones that I've just, that I've seen recently where it's one particular artist has done an anime version of the whole Marvel suite of heroes. That's been a popular set as well. So it's sort of, but in between, there's almost, almost no interest. Yep. With with um with those Marvel sets. Well, Andrew, it's, what you're missing is that uh, Captain Boomerang is a DC character. So down <laughs> in Australia, they don't like Marvel at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's our. I think he's our only. Is he our only superhero? <laughs> I think he's. I think he's it. Um. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know of any other Aussies, but uh, yeah, Captain Boomerang. Uh, he's in Suicide Squad. Yeah, I liked him in Suicide Squad. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> Marvel is a funny one, but there is so much content there, whether it's autograph or memorabilia stuff. Like there's there's an Iron Man set that had that had a, a Robert Downey Jr. auto in it. It's the picture of Tony Stark there and a RDJ auto there. Like and somebody probably bought that on eBay in 2012 for 30 bucks or something you know like and the same i think from that same set there's a john favreau auto as well like director of mandalorian and all of these awesome movies that's the same somebody's probably picked that up and they've just sat on it for 15 years um so there's no reason i don't think if if but if the card interesting card spreads to pop culture like marvel and movies there's there's no reason those those autos don't get extreme amount of interest. I mean, that's one of the things that I love collecting is old tops, TV and movie sets. And and Grayson's number one thing is is the Marvel masterpieces. If there's Marvel masterpieces cards on eBay, Grayson is likely bidding on them as we speak. Hmm. There is love it. Well, I mean, I don't know about the uh, I don't know about the. the they weren't huge you know what i mean like i, I remember you know collecting cards in the 90s and it was like yeah. oh those Mar- the marvel cards they didn't really look so good you know like the you know they're much better now i mean some of the more com- more yeah. you know more modern stuff is really you know really impressive um mm-hmm. but yeah i mean it shows kind of like the wide area you know that that people are 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 are, are putting their money into you know what i mean to yeah. me the marvel stuff is almost like people chasing what's hot next and yeah. it's very possible. Uh, we see the advent of, uh, you know, a, 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 a comics are coming back, right? And comics are becoming more investable and really going up in price. And mm-hmm. I guess, you know, the thought could be, um, you know, there's a new, um, you know, Venom movie coming out. Grab your Venom rookie cards from the 1990 Impel Marvel set. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, it's definitely not for everybody. And I grew up, I was I was a, I was a, a a young kid when those Marvel cards came out, and you can give me a, you know Ken Griffey Jr. card at the same time instead of a Marvel card, a, a, you know any day of the week and twice on Sunday. So you know nostalgia wise, I like Marvel. I think it might be an interesting play, um, mm. but I know most people who are doing it from like the nostalgia play would just you know rather get a, you know an eight or nine upper deck baseball pack, you know, or, yeah. or grab something like that instead of the 1990 Marvel. But uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely, there's definitely a, 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 a crazy assortment of stuff out there. I will, I will come mm. to the fact that I have bought in the last six months three sealed 1990 Marvel boxes and I've kept them sealed. Nice. Yeah, those, because... some of those early 90 sets were, for Marvel were amazing. I know I've got a folder of some really of some older stuff down there at my feet, which is... Yeah, beautiful old Spider-Man sets, X-Men. Just, I'd 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 be keeping them closed as well. Yeah. Yep. 
just keep them sealed because I mean sealed product. That's one I don't. There's no chase really in it. There's a couple holograms and stuff. No chase, so it's not like I'm thinking, oh wow, there's a Luka Doncic one of one in there that I'm gonna keep yeah. my box sealed and go open it. Like I kind of know what's in it. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. I'd love to talk about uh, football, soccer cards, if you don't mind, yes. Carl, because you know, in the U.S. and I, I'm an immigrant, but. And I played soccer my whole life, but in the U.S., literally since I was a kid, I've been hearing, you know, the popularity of soccer keeps going up, keeps growing, keeps growing, keeps growing. But the popularity of soccer in Europe and Australia has far surpassed what it's been in, in the USA. But what we've seen this year and, you know, a little bit of last June was a run up in Mbappe cards and Prism mm -hmm. World Cup cards. Mm -hmm. you know, is, is the soccer sports card market here to stay, do you think, Charlie? Or do you think that was just a, a fad, so to speak? We think it's here to stay. Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of interest in, uh, in, the, in the new English Premier League prism, which, um, which comes out soon, I believe. Um, so we've, got, we've certainly got a lot of collectors here in Australia who uh, who follow the English Premier League follow the athletes when once they go home and play in UEFA or play in the World Cup, mm -hmm. um, who are just they they can't wait for more um, for more soccer cards, especially you know people like Mbappe and uh, Ansu Fati, those guys are uh, are really key for them. There's um, we've got a large audience. Here in Australia and um, and uh, back in mainland China as well of, uh, of of Chinese collectors who are huge on soccer. So um, yeah, we'll literally sometimes come in and drop thousands of dollars on on soccer cards in the store. So um, we think it is here to stay. It's still in the what would you say? It's still in comparison to NBA, it's relatively cheap to get into it. You can buy a box, you can get um, get singles, you can find packs, you can get into breaks uh, at a much more affordable level than NBA at the moment. So, if it was one that um, that you're looking at just as a sort of investment, you would be you'd be getting in before everybody turns their eyes onto it i think at the moment it's still in the in the pre crazy stage because we've got i think we've got a there was meant to be a tournament in dubai last year which has been bumped to this year so that's going to have a lot of interest um, there'll be a there'll be a world cup soon as well uh, the world cup might actually be next year um, you get the Euro Cup coming, you get the World Cup coming. Mbappe's prices are going back up. I'm one of the morons who sold a bunch of his PSE tens when they dropped down into the sixes and the sevens. We we told people that, that was a bottom and they're going back up. You know, they're they're a thousand dollar card again, just his base World Cup prism, uh PSA ten. Luckily I held on to a couple of them, but those will be sold soon just because I don't know whether you you know I don't know if you're a collector of this stuff yourself. Are you Charlie? Do you collect anything yourself or no? Not I don't have any stock, I know. No. So that, so do you collect anything? Yeah, I collect. Um, I've got. I, I just. I'm, I'm holding on to vintage. Um, or vintage. I'm holding on to '90s rookies like Kobe, AI, mm -hmm. those sorts of cards. And then the rest of my stuff is pop culture, Godzilla. You know, Incredible Hulk. So I ask for a reason, right? So I mean, you know, and this is an important lesson for our guys out there. I mean, Charlie's a pro. Charlie's, Charlie's, you know, he's got a huge following. He's been doing this for a while. He knows the trends. He sees what people are buying. He has the data. You know, he, know, he knows what he's doing. But here I am, you know, I'm about to go on, on eBay. We're talking about AFL cards. I'm asking about rugby. I know Australia and New Zealand, it's far away from me, but I know they're not the same place. I did learn that somewhere in a geography class, right? Although, you know, I guess, you know, <laughs> right? Australia, my son says, yeah, two different places. But I worked for AIG for a while when uh, when the All Blacks were uh, sponsored by them. That was kind of cool. Met a bunch of those players. Um, so, yeah. but but the point I'm trying to make here is there is one. I promise, Andrew, is you can get spread too thin, right? So not only don't get high in your own supply yeah. as a store, but but you know, you have found what you like, which is '90s rookie cards. You know, your your Kobe's, your Iversons, and your pop culture stuff, right? And even though yeah. you're you know you're you're you have access to all of this stuff. 
you know, you, you are not dipping your toe in the, you know, the AFL cards for your own personal collection, at least not crazy. Maybe you have one or two cards here or there. Um, and that's an important lesson guys, because we really are, we're running the gamut here. We're talking about everything from basketball cards to pop culture, to, you know, rugby, to Australian football league, to soccer. Um, and I'm selling my Mbappes and you know what, I, you know, it, it'll be a time where I get mad and Andrew and I'll be talking next year and I'll be like, I can't believe I sold them for as cheap as they did, but I, I can't like, you know, I have to watch every basketball game. I know what's going on in these things. So I know what's going on with basketball. I watched the baseball game. So I know about the prospects that are coming up and you name it, you know, I, it, it, there's not enough hours in the day to really be expert enough and follow the trends and, and do it. And yeah. plus, I mean, I played soccer. I was a goalie. I got a lot of concussions, as you can tell, just from meeting me now, Charlie. I mean, my brain doesn't work like normal people. I used to die for the ball all the time and, and smash my head against the pole. Um, you know, which is well, great. I can't tell. I couldn't tell. Ah, nice. Thanks. He's being nice. He's being polite, but trust me, it's a, a little messed up. See the dent here? That's from a goalpost. Um, so, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, I also love getting red cards. But point being, I didn't love it. I mean, I don't love soccer. I love basketball. I love baseball. So to the guys listening to this, you know, learn from Charlie. He loves the 90s rookies. He loves his Kobe. He loves his Iverson. He loves his pop culture. And that's his stuff. And his collection is going to be curated in a way where he gets the best of the best stuff because he's focusing on what he loves, right? He's focusing on that stuff. And he also thinks that's probably the place to put money to make money. Um, you know, so so don't get I'm nuts. Curious. I'm Yeah, please. Being an Iverson and Kobe fan, uh, how you got into those? Into sorry, I didn't catch the start. Yeah. Kobe and Iverson. Where 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 the love for Kobe and Iverson and nineties mm -hmm. rookies like that come from? Oh, I just think they're. Uh, I just think they're. Um, they're so at the moment still. I mean, probably maybe not after this podcast comes out. Mm -hmm. um, that you can still you can still find like I've got these guys arriving. Like this upper deck, Kobe with the broken arm. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's a cool card, and so. and you can get it for I don't know you can still get it for thirty bucks sometimes mm -hmm. like the, the Clear Ultra is another one that you could get for twenty twenty thirty bucks right uh, card number fifty two yep it's one of yeah. my favorite cards that's a sick card like I know everybody wants the tops chrome but who has the thousands of dollars that you need not everybody to uh, to chase to chase that and that you know the top, i actually don't like the the i've got it where is it i think the upper deck is a better card but you know i'm not the i'm not the market so i don't i can't um i can't determine what the market wants and the same with ai like these little guys 20 bucks you can get a lot of um you know vince carter i think that was 10 bucks like these guys are these guys are the legends of um, of the '90s who started back then, and you can see it in some of the stuff that that um, that the the big collector accounts on Instagram, whether it's Gary V or some of his peers, the people that he talks to, they're snapping up. They're going back to the '70s and the '60s. They're picking up. You know Jerry West. They're picking up Will Chamberlain. They're picking up all of those guys because they're not printing any more of those. They mm -hmm. can't make any more. So once they're gone, and they're sitting in people's collections, they're not coming out, or they're or they're not coming out for a long time, most likely. So that's where that's the sort of guys where I think I'm looking at. You know those little. Kobe's or Vince Carter or Dirk Nowitzki and I'm like why why are these cards 15 bucks I'm I'm gonna get them and I'm just gonna sit on them uh, I'm with it and I think a lot of those guys you know Jordan created an opportunity he he put basketball on the map but those guys Tim Duncan Kobe Alan Iverson Vince Carter Dirk Nowitzki they took the league in a whole different direction they really made it the the most popular sport in the world. I think NBA is the most popular sport in the world. And, and I'd love to talk to you about China because, you know, Cage and I, we always say in, in our audience, like there's so many Chinese money coming into the hobby. Yes. We hear it from a distance, but you actually see Chinese customers in Australia. Is that the reality? And what are you seeing? Uh, look, the interest is huge from from China, we have there's a there's a large um, Chinese population. 
that live in Australia, they live in Melbourne where the store is. So there's a lot of people, there's a lot of guys who are, who, who come over to study in Australia. So they've, um, they live in an apartment in the city and they'll come into the store and they'll, they'll buy, you know, $10,000 worth of soccer cards or they'll come in and buy, you know, a box of flawless or something like that. And they, um, they trade very much amongst themselves, like with their, with their friends from China who were here studying. And often if the, if a card goes to, you know, whether it's a big single or something like that goes to a collector in China, it doesn't come out very often like it's 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 more often than not it's going to be traded amongst those guys those collectors over there mm -hmm. so the interest that we have i mean we've got interest from people in taiwan we've got interest from people in uh, in hong kong as well who um who will who will buy a box they'll buy a case or they'll buy um big high-end singles um it's it's every day every day there's there's uh, there's more interest from from chinese buyers yeah so it's i guess our proximity makes it we can see it um more quickly perhaps than people yeah. in the us can see and you can see it in them you can see it in the um the advent of product that is just for that market as well that is that is only a few years old all of those um you know chinese new year revolution the Tmall stuff, which is made for that market, because they've got to, you know, they've got to try and satisfy that demand over there. I mean, everybody's struggling to satisfy the demand this year, but um, without that, they, they wouldn't be making it if the demand wasn't there. One of Cage's favorite products uh, is the Ch the Revolution product. He he always talks about a cheap entry point, a uh, uh, beautiful card that he could rip with his son. And yep. he talks about the Chinese revolution cards quite a bit. So that's a great point. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a nice set. Um, it's one of the prettiest on-card autos, I think, as well. The, the on-card autos from last year, you know, if you get a Shaq or a, a, um, you know, a Dr. J, someone like that, they're beautiful cards. I couldn't help but notice not many of your cards were graded. PSA, BGS, SGC, and this year in 2020, um, the you know there's just tons of delays. It doesn't matter which company you sent to SGC, PSA, or BGS. There's just yeah. delays, delays, delays. Everyone's grading cards. The grading card market's through the roof. Are you seeing that as well overseas? Uh, and how do you guys also think about that? Because shipping is difficult. Uh, I'll leave it there, but I've, I'm very curious about the grading market overseas. Yeah, grading is, it's, there's just as much interest um, here in Australia as there is in the States, I would say. It's, the, the shipping itself is, is, not, is not so tricky, not as tricky as you might think. It's relatively cheap and, um, you know, things will get here in, sometimes in five days to and from to and from the states, it will. What the, the the ongoing joke with Australia Post, our local carrier, is that stuff will come from the US in five days, and then it'll it'll go from, you know, Sydney or wherever it lands right. to your house in an, in another two weeks. Yeah. So <laughs> that's great. Um, they're, the, they're they're the slow. It's slower once it gets here. Once it gets to and from the states. No problem, and we've got um, we we buy and sell a lot with collectors in the U.S. But grading, yeah, the interest is is huge. We um, we take care of grading for uh, hundreds of collectors here who go through us. We've got a we've got a Beckett um, consignment service, so we we'll, we um, we collate everyone's cards, we get them ready to go, send them off, and they come back eventually except not at the moment because they're all stuck in this, in this huge backlog. Um, the, the, the number one in Australia is, is BGS because it's a more affordable service. PSA has the, has the tiers, which once things can come back, it can end up having a massive influence on what taxes you might end up paying. 
Whereas um, BGS, you've got a upfront cost and you know, your card goes off and it comes back. But um, the interesting. Interest so you mean like, you know, PSA, you grade a card with PSA and then they upcharge you on the back end. When they ship it back to you, customs sees the price on it and you have to pay an additional tax. Is that what it is? It has happened. It doesn't happen yeah. every time, but it can happen. So, you, yeah, you, what you don't want is you, you ship it over and, you know, you've, you've bought the card here, you shipped it over and then on the way back, customs see it with a $10,000 value and they go, you know, you owe us a grand. Um, you're not going to want to do that. So the, the, the Beckett service that we offer at the moment makes it more uh, attractive. It's legit, like man. I just, the first time ever, I just got hit with a customs duty. I got to pay somehow. I got to go on to pay through FedEx on a car that came over from Australia. Yeah. Okay. And the seller was like, I'm declaring the full amount. I'm like, all right, God, do whatever you got to do, man. I mean, you you know, whatever you're comfortable doing, you're the one shipping it. So you know, I try not to lie. And yeah, we got hit with a nice little duty. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's man. interesting, yeah. right? Like I, I submitted um, Zion Prism cards early on last year. Those were $50 cards. But then yeah. when they get graded in their PSA 10s, now that's a $500 card. And let's say the market doubled, which it has last year. Now you, it's a $1,000 card. And not yeah. only are you getting upcharged by PSA, you're getting upcharged by the government. So you're you're excited that you got the PSA 10, but you're, they yeah. already got into your margin quite a bit. Yeah, it's like a big kick in the nuts while it's on the way home. It's like, Ugh, take that, you know, like, oh, great. Okay, 500 bucks. I get I've to only pay. Been, you, want kick in the, you want to kick in the nuts. The only time I've ever been upcharged by PSA was when I got back my Mbappe grades and they graded them finally. I sent them in, they were nothing. And it, they waited forever to grade them. And when I sent them in, they were garbage. They were all bulk. They were all like value subs. And I got their grades when they were flying at their height, you know, in the summer. And, they, they, you know, the 10s were like $3,000 and the 9s were 1000 They upcharged me on 9s. 9s I got upcharged on, on every single one of them. And I, I get them. And by the time I go to sell them, they're, they're, all, they're all, none of them should be upcharged now. So PSA got me good on that one. They got me good. Now they're lost the upcharge. It is what it yeah, is. Yeah, those, uh, those guys, I can't imagine what it must be like, uh, whether you're at PSA, BGS, or SGC, any of them now. It, it must be like, you know, the truck reverses up to the front door. It's just like beep, beep. They just cards go. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh -oh. <laughs> what'd perfect. you drop there? What do you drop? That was you drop perfect. There? That's what happens. I dropped my glass. That's what happened. Glass. I mean, is it a tinny? You got a tinny there? You, you kick over the tinny? What is it, Victoria Bitter or a Tui's? It probably, it would be Tui's. Yeah. So yeah. he's a he's South, South Wales guy. It's good stuff. I mean, they, they, they must be, they must have just have so much stuff to do. They must need to hire so many people. I don't know what the, the sale of, of PSA means. They, they're going to need to do something because... There's too much. There's too much getting sent to them. Charlie, we we made a post on our Instagram story that we're doing an episode with you, and yep. we got just flooded with responses because they're so excited. Oh, really? oh yeah. And one, well, we have a lot of a lot of Australians. I'm telling you, we got a lot. <laughs> you might Plant Street Collectibles, Australian? No. Well, anyway, he or she asked this question. The cherry four exclamation points. Clearly excited. Who do you like out of this 2020, 2021 rookie class? Mm. We've talked about Lamelo. Uh, I think he's for for us. That's who we're keeping a keeping a, a real close eye on. I I also have heard good things and I've seen some good things about Wiseman um, and uh, the kid from Israel, Denny. What's your second name? Avija, my guy. Denny Avija, the Washington guy. Yeah, Denny Avija as well. But um, so probably those those three are the guys that I'm that I'm keeping an eye on. But for for uh, for me, it's Lamelo's number one. He's just um, hopefully he gets a bit more of that playing time and uh, out at Charlotte, and he's um, he's got a, a nice team around him maybe, and. Um, We'll see what we'll see what he can see what he can do there. 
So a better piece of info I'll get for you for Plant Street and for anybody out there, right? Because Charlie comes to us with, with a real he's, – he's a Swiss Army knife, man. This is a five-tool player, Charlie, right? So there's a brick-and-mortar shop. There's a yeah. crazy internet presence with all of these great memes and all the great content you're putting out there, plus breaking, plus all that stuff. And a lot of our listeners are people who got into this hobby in the last year. Uh, Plant yeah. Street's a great example and, you know, went full-time as, you know, as, as a, um, you know, a, a business. So, you know, you got a little bit of advice for, you know, for anybody, people who are looking to go out into breaking, people who are looking to, you know, open up a store, people looking to store from, people who are looking to build up their internet presence online, you know, mm -hmm. anything that's kind of served you well in growing, you know, since the magical Gary V appearance or whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> the, what would my advice be? Probably business advice is a tricky one for me because I'm not as closely involved in that so it's pair up with a smart business guy like gray yeah yeah um, <laughs> That's what I, do I know I, do. I i think i know what i think i know what gray would say uh and i agree would be to choose choose a niche that is not being serviced you're if you're trying to start a card website a card store you are coming into a time where there is an extreme amount of interest and it actually becomes difficult to get hold of product at times. Oh, so yeah. that is something which I think people might on the outside might not realize the, um, the, the allocation of product is, um, is, is difficult at times, you know, you, there can be a promise from a distributor and then there's been too much interest and the allocation has been halved or it's been, really shaved off so that sort of thing just keep that in mind try a niche whether you have um whether you want to do a a, a mystery box product you know nice. whether nice. you've got you've got a, a big bunch of cards singles that you have that you don't know what to do with and you box them up and you have a chase card in there whether it's a jordan rookie or a Gretzky rookie or whatever and you know there's a you make two you do a 200 box run of that product and there's a one in 200 chance you're going to pull the Jordan rookie right. that sort of thing. find your own find your own kind of deal I'll tell you what I learned from you already yeah. and this will be for the listening audience be, pers be persistent right I mean personable obviously you're a great guy you know I'm, I'm you know not all of our guests are as engaging so thank you for that but more oh, importantly you. that gary v story was a great story man because you know you weren't annoying uh, we'll talk to tyler maybe he'll tell us a different story and say that you were annoying but but you <laughs> yeah. know you, you heard gary was coming you know you, you know that your partner was uh you know was just you know in, in a meeting with him you know just at, him at the national with him you know he was coming and you're persistent you know what i mean you, you stuck with it right and you know same thing you're doing with your business you know, you're, you know, COVID happens and you got to close the brick and mortar, but you expand what you're doing online and your global presence has grown probably more than you knew would have thought during a, during a shutdown time. Um, mm. And the content, right? I mean, look what you guys are doing. I mean, every day where, you know, we look on the page and there's something else that I get to laugh at. So it's <laughs> persistence, man. I mean, that's, that's what you're all about, clearly. So uh, that's what I would tell our listeners. Yeah. yeah, persistence would definitely be one. Don't, don't stop because... <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes is just, you know, there were, there were 10 people started posting sports card content and, you know, eight people got too busy or they forgot about it or they had kids and, you know, whatever. But the two guys who actually, maybe they weren't even that good at the beginning, you know, and they might have been dreadful, but um, they kept posting and they kept improving. They kept spinning off other stuff. They didn't go away, and you know, after the ten years or the something like that, they they've they've become just by default they're the big names. So yeah, persistence and um, and not smacking people in the face with um, with sales all the time. That's 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 the other big one for us. Um, keep that keep try and keep that to a to a minimum, whether it's one out of every 10 posts you do is, hey, come and buy this. And the rest of it is talking about Lamello or talking about a story where, you know, Grayson collected Eddie Jones instead of Kobe Bryant. Oh, you know, I gotta be Grayson. I have a stack of Eddie Jones rookie cards from 1996, <laughs> a stack. You should, get together, you should get together with G, you could, you could 
trade. You know, you you guys would have the Ian, what have could, the depth star uh, of Eddie Jones. What could Eddie Jones do? What was he really good at? Finger roll. Eddie Jones could finger roll like nobody's business. <laughs> Eddie Jones. YouTube that, guys, if you haven't looked. I think I've told you that before. But, yeah, man. He I was, got, a I got a, he was very yeah. good. Very yeah. good. Reckless oh, Cards man. asks you, Charlie, just one one or two more here. How many more packs yeah. of Kobe highlights are you going to rip? Oh, man. I think those guys, those guys are in store. So I'm actually off site. I'm, I'm down. I'm in another state. Uh, so I don't get to see all that stuff in store. Those guys are over in Melbourne. So they'd have a few probably of those Kobe uh, career highlights packs. They've had three already, I know, uh, have come instead of, um, instead of those redemption cards. They've probably got a couple more on the way. And I imagine they're going to open all of them. They're just going to keep going, keep chugging through because they might so, as well now, right? Like the, 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 the funds that they've pulled out have not been great. We've seen some awesome, I saw an awesome one of one Yesterday, I think it was. Somebody showed me a picture in our Facebook group of um, it was it was a one on one career highlight. I think it was the might have been the one where he's got the he's got the big jacket on and he's hugging the trophy. And it was an awesome card. But um, yeah, Grayson and Dale have had no luck with those career highlight packs so far. I reckon <laughs> they'll just keep going. Yeah. Cage, unless you have anything else, I have one last question from one. Yeah, man, I'll save that one. Save that one. So you one last question. So I got a couple questions for Charlie. Federation Square, you love it or you hate it? Uh, hate. Hate. I'd be, I'd be hate also, man. I'd hate. Yeah. You've sounded out Australia, but when you're talking to people who aren't from uh, from, from the United States, you say Australia? Yeah, Australia, yeah. Why do you abbreviate everything? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have people messaging me abbreviations. They ask me what my favorite thing for Macca's is, and I have to look up. That's McDonald's. Yeah, that's a funny thing, I guess. That is a bit of a idiosyncrasy of Australian language is, is shortening everything. Yeah, McDonald's becomes Macca's. Yeah, Macca's. Um, yeah, I'm like, what the hell? I had to look this up. But, uh, you know, I mean, I have a cup of this, a cup of that, a tinny. I'm four tinnies in. I'm going to ask Cage a question. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And here's one. You probably won't even understand this. If, yeah. If you have to have one, you're going with the uh, you're going with the Aussie cheese fries or the blooming onion. So you don't even what? know what that is. So you have no, no clue. That no. is what we think Australian food is. We think Australian <laughs> food is a blooming onion and a cheese fries because that's what Outback tells us. Last one. You got to have one. You, you have to keep it, and you got to kill the other one. I got two. I'm bringing one of each to your house. I'm bringing you a kangaroo and a koala. Which one are you keeping? Which one are you killing? Keep the kangaroo and kill the koala. Nice. I like it. I like it. All right, Andrew. That's all I have for this guy. I mean, I bring, I bring the hard-hitting questions. Now you get to ask the final one. <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport, Charlie. I'm, no thinking of calling, I'm thinking of calling this dumb section like the cage match where people have to come in. I give credit, <laughs> give credit to my, my, my pal uh, Lefko. Adam Lefko told me that that's a segment I should add to this. So uh, we're thinking about adding it. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Somebody might try to kick my ass with some of these dumb questions. <laughs> I'm all about the cage match. Yeah, drink, do it. <laughs> Bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it, Andrew. We'll collab with Cherry on the, on the content. If they, need, <laughs> if, they need a, if they need a segment. Preston Amato asks, where do you see the hobby in 10 years? Mm. his store clearly all of them they're buying everything everyone's there no well soccer cards on the rise china's getting into collecting usa card well listen a little a little offshoot while you're thinking about that american baseball the baseball cards are mary do you care does anybody in australia buy it uh not many not many not many yet uh, there is there is some interest, but yeah, not um, not many yet. I don't know what it is about baseball. That's that... Preston's bag right there. So that's an offshoot, Preston, where he, he does not see in ten years American baseball being big in Australia because it's clearly not big now. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's an interesting one. I don't know why it is that the NBA has the NBA just done better marketing in the previous decades. They've really embraced that global aspect of things, whereas MLB. It's really quite, you know, outside of the U.S. Is it is Japan the biggest market? I don't know. I lived in Japan for a while, and they they love baseball. Um, they love their own baseball. I don't know that they love baseball cards. 
they love the NBA in Japan. They love the NBA. I mean, they, you know, they're probably 80% NBA cards there. Um, Korea's got a baseball league also, which I only found out about because when our league stopped, I was up at three in the morning, four in the morning, watching Korean baseball league games. <laughs> and my, need my baseball fix. <laughs> yep. uh, but in, in 10 years, where is sports cards? I think it's, I think it's definitely more popular. I think perhaps it in 10 years it's it's become more mainstream and it might have it might have it might have already reached its peak and be at a be at a plateau i think within in in 10 years i think it will i think it will have climbed up and um and the interest will have peaked and the people who are there in that space will be um they will be the people who are in it for the long haul. Um, maybe in ten years we look we, we look at it, and I'm completely wrong. It might be even crazier. I think there'll be. I think the advent of um, of digital cards will continue to grow. Um, I still don't understand them, but they, they seem to be growing still. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it would be cool to have another store. Or it would be cool to have enough product to stock another whole store, um, whether we open one uh, elsewhere in Australia. Um, uh, yeah, I think US. US would be wow. That'd be that'd be amazing. Where could we where could we put one? I don't know. Really, or New York? New York would be fun. <laughs> well, I say New Jersey. Philly or New York? New York could be fun. Nah, I say New Jersey. It's right between Philly and New York. And there's this nice affluent location called Cherry Hill that goes well with your name. That's true. Oh. That's true. I actually get that. I actually get that all the time when I put in um when I tag our location. I type in Cherry and it goes <laughs> Cherry Hill. I'm like, not yeah, Cherry. See? You know, wherever that is. I don't know where. Could that be is. wrong here and somebody correct me, but I'm pretty sure Muhammad Ali lived there for a little while. Oh, cool. That's, I, think, I think that's where my home is. from my house cage, right over the bridge. So you would know. So you would know. Nice. You live, you live they're, near they're the all, They're all Sixers and Flyers fans, and it's kind of weird because they're not from where we are, but okay. We'll accept the <laughs> fandom. <laughs> well, New Jersey has teams, but they call them New York teams. I mean, the Jets and the Giants play in New Jersey, but they're the New York Jets and the New York Giants. It's amazing. What about the, what about the Devils or the Rangers? Well, the Devils are New Jersey Devils, and the Rangers actually play in New York, so neither of those are applicable. But thank you for bringing up hockey teams. Notice that Charlie did not bring up hockey at all. I thought the New Jersey Devil was like an episode of the X-Files. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the Tasmanian Devil. Oh, man. So hockey not big down there, huh? No, no, not really, no. Some, some you know... Poor uh, hockey collectors who desperately try to get product, um, but there's not many of them around at the moment. No, no. Right. Well, I've already asked all my hard-hitting questions. You got anything else to wrap it up, Andrew? We uh, we wasted enough of Charlie's time with my ridiculousness. But I listen, Tui's that would be my tinny. Forget about it. That would I be love my, Charlie uh, already because he's a Kobe collector, and I, I. Oh, so Kobe or Iverson? You have to only collect one. <sighs> Hmm. It'd probably be Kobe, but I mean, if you're on a budget, go AI. Just go, go, go Iverson. Just buy, snap up all his stuff. He's still in the media. He's not like a guy who's retired, so he's still got some pop culture, you know, cultural impact. He's not being forgotten about yet. So, AI. The current players' league, and I've said this before, but the current NBA, the way it is with the fashion, the flair, it's all player centric was started by Iverson. It was started by Iverson. And he was shunned. He was, you can't act like that. And now today's league is literally a, a byproduct of, of that. He's, he's so influential. We'll see how long it lasts because Walt Frazier would have something to say about that. I mean, Walt Frazier, you know, he would tell you he was the one who brought style to the league. But Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah but that's no one true. Knows who that is. <laughs> no one knows who Walt, Charlie knows who Walt Frazier is. Yeah, Walt Fraser, Dr. J as well. I saw, I've seen some very fashionable pictures of Dr. J with some extremely tight trousers and flares on. <laughs> so, I mean, that actually, 
that gives me an idea for a um, for a post. Actually, I might go and find some crazy fashion um, posts. Of NBA so there you go. Stuff. There we go. Look what we did. We helped you out, but you've helped us and you've helped our audience tremendously because you know they love having you on, and uh, you know you're like a national treasure for these guys. It's amazing. You should see, you should see some of the messages we're getting from uh, from our brothers down under. So oh, we're we're thrilled to have you on, Charlie. For the one or two people that don't follow you, you know. Cherry Collectibles on Instagram. Is there anywhere else? You know, I know you're making a huge push with your podcast. Where should people find you? Uh, so you'll find us at, uh, well, the website, you'll find us at www.cherry.cards. Um, and that'll, that'll send you through to us. You'll find us on Facebook, Cherry Collectibles. Instagram is uh, probably where, um, where things are the most popping at the moment. Everybody is um, is big on Instagram with cards. We're on Twitter as well. I, I'm not very good at Twitter, um, but and and all of our breaks and all of our all of our podcasts will go out on our YouTube as well. So you'll find us on YouTube also. Whoever runs your pages, you know your Instagram, your website does an amazing job. Hats off! Hats off! Thank you. That is, if it's social, then it's then it's pretty much me, um, and s some of the website stuff. We actually got a new website coming, apparently. Grayson tells me, but he's been mm -hmm. saying it for a few years. So um, you know, it could be next month. It could be in twenty twenty four. I don't know. <laughs> Love you, Charlie. Nice Thanks, to guys. You. Thanks Thank so you much, guys. That's not a knife. That's a knife. <laughs> That's a knife. <laughs> See you guys. Take Good care, night. everybody. Thank you for spending some time with us on another episode of the Lucas Tigers and Bronze Oh My podcast. Um, do us a favor and like, subscribe. Ah, you know what? Don't just like and subscribe. Everybody does that. If you like us, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your enemies, tell everybody. And uh, we hope you got something from spending some time with us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.